The world is on fire, you can't go outside, and I haven't uploaded in a while. Let's talk about Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker for two hours. My favorite part of the movie is when Rey kills those red stormtroopers. Then it cuts to Kylo Ren killing a bunch of glamour models, and then it cuts back to Rey killing the same six red Sith troopers. Yes, the penultimate, final movie of a multi-billion dollar franchise features our hero killing the same six guys twice. And the movie hoped you didn't notice. But I noticed. We'll explore that in detail later. Now, many of you may have found the movie kind of boring, and you couldn't really get into it, and maybe you're not sure why. I mean, yeah, maybe you didn't really like the characters, or the awkward jokes, or the plot holes, or the bad writing, or the plot conveniences, but besides all that, there's something deeper here. Rise of the Skywalker is inherently broken on the most basic and fundamental level of storytelling. Now I just ask that you bear with me for a second, because we're going to get into some very high level, complicated film theory. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this term, but there's this word in narrative storytelling called conflict, and is derived from the ancient Latin word conflictus, which roughly translates to if your hero and villain have the same goal, then you don't have a story! Idiots! Ray's goal for most of the movie is to get to the secret Sith world to kill old Palpy. It's been a long time. How have you been? I've been really busy being dead. And Kylo Ren's goal for most of the movie is to... Take Rey to the secret Sith world so that they can kill Palpatine. So, um, what's the conflict here? You write a screenplay without conflict or crisis, you'll bore your audience to tears. The whole movie is basically... Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Wow. What a climactic conclusion to our grand finale. Are you wasting my two precious hours with your movie? I don't have any bloody use for it. Though I'm not mad, more relieved. The Star Wars sequels are finally over, and we can put this classic series to rest. The Mandalorian Season 2, Obi-Wan Kenobi's getting his own show, Ray and Johnson's getting his own trilogy, there's a prequel to Rogue One! Wait, how does a movie that's already a prequel get its own prequel spinoff? What the f- Sorry, I'm stalling. Normally in these movie things, I like to talk about character and structure and my themes. But unfortunately, when it comes to Rise of the Sky Wanker, it's about as deep as a picture of a Twitter user complaining about Kylie Jenner committing cultural appropriation for hair braids projected onto a flat board that exists on a flat earth model. I'm trying to say the movie was shallow. It's, it's not about anything. Even the paper thin theme about not letting your family be your destiny is completely undone by Rey taking the Skywalker name at the end. So you know, screw it! Let's just do it point by point. Opening title crawl, Emperor Palpatine is alive! Jeez, movie, how about a spoiler warning? I mean, it's not like a pretty huge and shocking reveal that maybe the audience should see, instead of for no reason sucking all the emotional energy out of it with the opening title crawl. What I'm scene? The scene is about emotionality! They wouldn't even have to change anything in the beginning of the movie. You'd just have Kylo show up and it'd be a surprise! So why do this? And why would Palpy publicly reveal himself to the galaxy? He has a secret armada of Star Destroyers, and everyone thinks he's dead! Shouldn't he use the element of... surprise? Later in the movie, we find out that Palpy can just talk directly into Kylo's mind. So he could've just told Kylo personally if you want him to come hang out with him. I can't really see any possible reason Palpy would do this. Except to alert the Resistance and Rey so the plot of the movie can start. Oh. Oh. Lazy. Clumsy. We start with Kylo killing a bunch of random people we don't know to get a thing pyramid. 
At no point in the movie is it ever explained who these people are, or how Kylo knew that, wherever he is, has a Sith planet finder. But Sitch, if you buy the visual novel and all this extra content, it explains all the- Stop! This is a movie! Audiences shouldn't be expected to do a research project just to figure out what's going on! What matters here is the movie. I'm telling a story! Anyways, yes, Palpy's alive and hooked up to some machine thing. It doesn't matter that the Death Star was completely vaporized. This is Dragon Ball Z, and he's Frieza now! Just stick a few robot parts on him and he's good to go! Or maybe this Palpy's a clone. Or maybe the Palpy in Return of the Jedi is like a meat puppet that this Palpatine controlled. Or maybe he Dr. Manhattan himself back to life with the Force! Who knows?! The movie never tells us. All we get is later in the movie, Meridoc frickin' Brandy Buck shows up and says, Dark science. Cloning. Secrets only the Sith knew. Are you kidding? Nope. That's all the movie gives us. Just shut up about it, viewer. No questions asked. Hey, remember when Darth Vader was prophesized to bring balance to the Force? The prophecy is that Anakin will bring balance to the Force and destroy the Sith. He becomes Darth Vader. Darth Vader does become the hero. Darth Vader does destroy the Sith, meaning himself and the Emperor. <laughs> Sorry, George! Disney didn't account for Ruin Johnson to paint Star Wars into a corner. And when that happens, all he can do is whip out the shovels and dig up that dead horse for yet another beating. Then in true bad guy fashion, the first line out of Palpy's mouth is a bold-faced lie. Snoke trained you well. <laughs> what? I don't know. Maybe he's just too old and forgot the last movie. Bested by a girl who had never held a lightsaber, you failed! Turns out Palpy was behind everyone and everything evil for the last 60 years, including growing Snoke clones and vats. Why did they genetically engineer Snoke to look like a horrible monster man instead of just like a normal guy? Unless, of course, J.J. is just winging it at this point. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? Wait, do the Snokes come out with force power? Because then you could have like a superpower Snoke army. Or do they have to be trained? Or does Palpy have to give them some of his force powers like the guy from Mob Psycho? Stop asking questions! Then Palpy tells Kylo the most devastating, insane, crazy reveal that should shatter Kylo's entire world. I have been every voice you have ever heard inside your head. Wow. So like, this whole time, for years, Kylo thought that it was d Vage that had been guiding him. But no, that was all a lie. I'm sure this grand reveal will have a deep, emotional impact on Kylo, the guy whose entire character seems to be his mental and emotional instability. Maybe this will cause him to question everything he believes. Maybe he'll question his feelings towards Luke and the dark side. Maybe this will open the door for Kylo to change. What are you, stupid? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was a good movie for a second. Of course, Kylo has no reaction to this huge twist and it doesn't affect him in any way, and never comes up again. Great! Wonderful! You might wonder why Palpy has been shaping Kylo for all these years as part of some grand plan. Was it all to make Kylo just another pawn like his old grandpappy? Or does he want to steal Kylo's body? Well, don't worry, viewer, because that question is never answered. Palpy then reveals he has a fleet of hundreds or maybe thousands of Star Destroyers. You what?! Wait, how the hell did he build so many Star Destroyers secretly? Who's paying for this? This guy says he just conjured them. Did he mean that literally or figuratively? Where do they get the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people, required to man those ships? Why were they underground? If they're on a secret planet, no one can even access. Not only do you have the difficulty of building thousands of Star Destroyers, but now you have to build them under the ground? But there's just dirt there. Wouldn't like an underground base have like hidden doors that open so ships could fly out? Were these ships literally grown? Palpy just plant Death Star parts and 30 years later, Star Destroyers pop out? Is Palpy so powerful he's literally raising them from the ground with force powers? Or is he just being thematic? We're like five minutes into the movie, then there's already a million questions that will never be answered. 
Palpy says he'll give Kylo all these magic Star Destroyers, and all he has to do is kill Rey. And Rilo Ken is too stupid to ask, Gee, I wonder why the scary monster man who's been manipulating me my whole life wants to make me king of the universe and ask me almost nothing in return. That's not suspicious at all! Also, it's kind of funny, because can Kylo even see the ships that Palpy's raising? Maybe Kylo's just standing there like, What is this guy even talking about? Where's Anakin? Meanwhile, on Ice Planet, where apparently Luke Skywalker's Force Ghost was reincarnated as an alien... A spy in the First Order. A spy? Who? I don't know. Transfer the message. Get it to Leia. Hurry! He tells Finn they just got a new spy in the First Order. Convenient. Finn immediately plugs the data he's given into R2. You'd think he'd be a little bit more suspicious trusting people, considering how that went last time. TIE Fighters show up, and we're treated to our first nausea-inducing action scene. The action in this movie is much like the plot, in that they try to make everything happen so fast that you won't question it because your brain can't even process what is going on. For example, Poe is making multiple jumps to light speed in order to throw off the TIE Fighters tailing him. That's fine, I guess. Until you remember that the big plot point from the last movie was that normally you can't track people when they go to light speed. And when the First Order had a ship that could, everyone was like, What is this? So does each TIE Fighter have this super secret high tech ability that required an entire Star Destroyer to power it in the last movie? Or did they just hope you hated The Last Jedi so much you pushed all memories of it out of your brain? Meanwhile, Holy crap, Rey is flying. Remember when Yoda had to use that little hover chair? Damn, son, you a bitch. Remember when Anakin got all chopped up because he had to jump and couldn't fly? Damn, son, you a bitch. But look, at least Rey is finally training. Although at this point, it's too little too late. Whenever Luke was training, either Yoda would be telling him world-building lore about how the Force works, or we would be learning how Luke as a character reacts to situations. But this scene teaches us nothing about the Force, or Rey as a character. It's like the writers were just tired of fans complaining about how powerful Rey is and how she never trains. So they just threw in some shallow, surface-level scene to point to. See guys, Rey trains... just like Luke did. Then we find out Rey has been using Luke's lightsaber. Didn't Luke's lightsaber get utterly destroyed last movie? How does Rey have it again? Stop asking questions, old man! Oh, it's got some electrical tape on it, so, you know, it's all good. It's all good now. Then Poe yells at Rey for training instead of coming on the mission with them, saying she's the best fighter they have. I guess Poe forgot that it was Rey's Jedi powers that saved everyone's lives last movie, so maybe she should train them as much as possible. But also, how exactly would Rey have helped them when they didn't even get into any physical fights? and just flew away from TIE Fighters, what does he think Rey would have even done? Oh. Well, never mind. Damn, Rey, why didn't you go with him? Poe says, Uh-oh, Palpy is indeed alive, and they got that info from the spy. So I guess Palpy's message in the title crawl was completely pointless and served no purpose other than to emotionally undercut his reveal. Is this, is this a troll? Is JJ trolling us? Wait, why the hell is Mary suddenly in this movie? Was he in the last movie and I just forgot? My uh, other sidekick, uh, yeah. Yep, been with me the whole time. Hobbington says, cloning, only something the Sith knew. Uh. Wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, now we're supposed to script the entire prequels? And like, wasn't there a race of aliens who made an entire clone army for the Republic? That was only like 50 years ago in universe. The Clone Wars were kind of a big deal. You fought in the Clone Wars? That would be like if we got word North Korea finished building a nuclear bomb and Mary was like, hmm, nuclear weapons, secret something only the Nazis knew. Dexter Jexter, confirmed Sith. The Emperor and his fleet have been hiding in the unknown regions on a world called Exegol. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? On a world called Exegol. Exegol? Like the Exegols? The comedically inept superhero squad from Frisky Dingo, the adult swim show by Adam Reed and Matt Thompson that is one of my favorite TV shows and was also the precursor to one of my other favorite TV shows, Archer? Yeah, you. 
you better gasp collectively, because until you find Xander Cruz, I'm going to blow one of your heads off every hour. Dude, we have got to do this. Mm, I don't know. What? You know, I, I, I don't think we have enough time. We got a whole hour. Meanwhile, Ray happens to find out, just two seconds earlier, that Luke was looking for the Exticles too, and conveniently wrote information about it in the books he tried to burn for no reason last movie. Then our heroes go to embark on a dangerous mission, and for no reason at all, they decide to bring the slowest, most fragile, useless member of the group. For what? possible reason. Then we find out they cut poor Rose out of the movie. <gasps> and that she got totes friendzoned by Finn. <gasps> Guess some of the Asian markets weren't too happy about joining the current year. That's pretty racist, but correct. Then Leia gives Rey Luke's lightsaber, even though five minutes earlier, Rey said she would have to earn it. I will earn your brother's saber one day. Was easy. It's almost like they just had to use whatever leftover clips they had from Carrie Fisher in the last movie, even if it doesn't make sense now. Meanwhile, an evil Sith monkey... What is he? ...remakes Kylo Ren's dark fedora. Only now it glows with the pain of cutting yourself. He's edgy. He's in your face. Then, the only smart person in the room asks why Palpy is doing this for them. So Big Brain Rilo... ...kills him. Is this like a meta-commentary on the movie? Is this JJ telling the audience to just shut up and- What is he asking for in return? Stop asking questions, old man! The gang utilizes their Disney ownership and heads to the Marvel Universe to join the Hulk street parade on planet Goldblum. Poe says there's always random First Order patrols in crowds like these. Um... Why? Why would there be First Order people and a random parade in a random desert planet in who the hell knows where? Did we forget that the First Order is not the Empire and doesn't technically have control over the galaxy? And even with the first movie, the Empire was only on Tatooine because they knew the droids were there. An escape pod was jettisoned during the fighting, but no life forms were aboard. She must have hidden the plans in the escape pod. Set a detachment down to retrieve them. See to it personally, Commander. The Empire didn't randomly have a battalion of troopers already there. When it comes to the First Order, we don't know if they have control over any planets. Yet it seems like they're already everywhere at all times. Yeah, my ass is everywhere. Let's just take this moment to appreciate that an entire Star Wars sequel trilogy was created, and we, the audience, have no clue what the First Order even is, what planets they control, or how the rest of the galaxy feels about them. That's why the new Star Wars movie universe feels so dead and devoid of life. It's like a video game where it only loads in the environment around your character, and everywhere you're not looking, is an empty void. Then Poe says, let's split up, gang, and see what the locals know. Yes, a bunch of random squid people are gonna know about the super secret only to exist in the entire universe Sith Wayfinder. Thank you, Poe. I can see why Leia turned command over to purple prom dress last movie instead of you. I mean, if Poe had any sense, the second he saw squid people in robes dancing, he would have gotten the heck off that planet. Ruin has come to our family. Then Ray looks at a bunch of little kids and gets baby crazy. Wow, this movie is sexist. Come on, JJ, you're supposed to be better than all this. Then Ray rudely walks away from this squid kid that just gave her a present in the middle of their conversation because Ray is inexplicably a dick in this movie. I guess because she's gonna be tempted by the dark side now, guys. Mm-hmm. Kylo Skype calls and asks her out, but she swipes left. Though I do like how Kylo learns her location. Clever use of force powers. But once. Even if it doesn't make sense. We'll come back to that. Also, did you know that this First Order guy is evil? I mean, look at that raccoonized lighting. Sure, he's part of the space Nazis, but I didn't know he was evil until just now. Holy crap, the First Order already scanned the beads and got a stormtrooper there in like 10 seconds flat. 
These guys are efficient. No wonder getting their super ultra mega Death Star and whole fleet destroyed doesn't slow them down. Then in a dirty, dank, disgusting meat wagon, Lando, the most competent man in the galaxy shows up. You may not think that now, but you will. Turns out, Leia called Lando off screen, and he just happened to be nearby, and also just happened to have been with Luke. For some reason. When they were searching for the Exicles. Whoosh! And or convenient! Also, turns out the alien with the other Sith beacon is named Ochi. <laughs> what? What is it with the names in these movies? Exticle, Uchi. That sounds like one of those dumb names in Zim where the joke is the name is so dumb because the writers couldn't have been bothered to make up a good one. Punchy? An alien? Damn, that's crazy. The First Order shows up and how come none of these planets have militaries? How come no planet seems to care that the First Order is invading their sovereignty? Stop asking rational questions. Another chase scene. And there are some very strange shot choices in this movie. Two seconds earlier, we saw two TIE Fighters and other flying craft. So why is the First Order chasing them on dirt bikes? Uh. Why would dirt bikes even exist in a world where everything hovers? No wonder the First Order is so incompetent that they got their Death Star and whole fleet destroyed. Then our heroes brutally murder brainwashed child soldiers with no remorse. And it's played for laughs. Look, you can either have stormtroopers be faceless, nameless, disposable obstacles for our heroes to murder without a thought, or you can have them be mind-controlled, sympathetic child soldiers. All of us here were stormtroopers. We mutinied at the Battle of Anset Island. They told us to fire on civilians. We wouldn't do it. We laid our weapons down. All of you? The whole company. You can't have both. That is until one hyper-competent child soldier manages to take them both out in one second. Uh-oh, quicksand! Hey, Ray, how about some of that earthbending we saw earlier, eh? No? Nothing? Okay. Then Finn says, Ray, I never told you, and gets cut off. We never find out what Finn wanted to say, and Ray only asks once and is never answered. We assume he was going to say, I love you, but at the end of the movie, Finn and Ray never get together. So why set it up? Did they edit out the Finn Ray kiss to appease the Chinese slave camp overlords, but couldn't cut this scene out because Poe references it too many times? And why does Poe keep bringing it up? Jealous? I guess that's why Ray didn't save them from the quicksand with force powers. She'd rather everyone die than have the conversation with Finn. I'm just not into you. I like bad boys now. So it came out after the movie that J.J. Abrams was claiming Finn was going to tell Ray he's force sensitive. And well, I hate to break it to you, but if you actually believe that, then you might be a little intelligence sensitive. This mission is everything. We cannot fail. Then why didn't you send them some backup? Fortunately, the quicksand just happens to be the exact same quicksand that Uchi fell in, and is exactly where they need to go to find the magic dagger. Well, isn't that convenient for you? I guess Ocho just fell into some quicksand and gave up on life to allow a perfectly laid out skeleton to form. Or the sand snake ate him and then pooped his corpse out all in one perfect piece. Well, at least we know why C-3PO randomly came. They knew they would need his abilities to translate. I guess the main characters read the script before going on this quest. Now that's what I call proactive protagonist. But 3PO claims he can't say what it says because Space Twitter considers the Sith language extremely offensive and 3PO doesn't want to get hashtag cancelled. Also, the movie needs to be padded out for another 20 minutes of pointless side questing that doesn't really relate to the main plot. Then a sand snake shows up. I'm sorry, a less annoying space sand snake. There, there's snakes in space? There's literally everything in space, Morty! Instead of instantly murdering it like all those poor, mind-controlled, stolen child soldiers... In the arms... Ray somehow knows the snake is hurt, even though the injury is not visible until she's right on top of it. I guess the Force told her so she could heal the snake like Jesus and set up that healing is now a Jedi power the Star Wars movies will acknowledge. That might have been real useful at some other point in Star Wars history. <laughs> oh. 
Also, I don't know why, but like when she heals the snake and then it instantly opens the door, it just, I don't know, it just feels like a video game cutscene. Remember when Luke and Lando were looking for a dangerous Jedi hunting ship? Well, apparently after they found it, they just left it sitting there. Yep, perfectly exposed and out in the open of a populated planet. I guess no one cared to move it or salvage it for 30 years. Wait a minute! Later in the movie, we find out that the droid has important information on it. So you're telling me that when Luke and Lando found Ochi's ship, they didn't think to check the droid's memory banks for important data. The very thing that starts Luke on his journey to being a Jedi in the first movie. People are stupid, but they're not that stupid. Then the Knights of Ren show up for glamour shots in the desert. Who? Knights of Ren. Ghouls. Who? Then the Knights of Ren show up and capture Chewbacca. But they don't try to capture everyone else. Why? Then Kylo, who was apparently the only guy to bring a spaceship in a sci-fi movie about spaceships, decides to try and run Rey down, even though he wants to capture her alive. But it's okay, because she Naruto Sasuke's the TIE Fighter. Believe it! But whoops! The spaceship that captured Chewbacca is flying away! Don't worry, she can grab a fleeing spaceship with force powers! Damn! And it took Yoda all that effort to move one that wasn't even flying. What a poser. But double whoops! Kylo was totally fine despite exploding! Nah. Maybe Palpy taught him the how to not die in explosion Sith Force ability, but then he gets into a Force tug of war with Rey. Why wouldn't he just attack her with Force powers so she would have to let the ship go? Like, what is Kylo even trying to accomplish by pulling it? Then triple whoops, Rey accidentally blows up the ship with Sith lightning! But who and why and for what reason? Is this just like a thing that happens to Force users, or is Force lightning like a natural skill of the Palpatine bloodline? <sighs> this really is Naruto. Ekeka Genkai, also known as Bloodline Limit, are abilities that are passed down through specific clans. But don't worry, we find out two seconds later that Rey actually didn't kill Chewbacca. Can't have a dark spot ruin our perfect golden girl, can we? Rey starts freaking out about frying the family dog because she saw a vision of herself and Kylo sitting on the throne of the Sith. Wow, that vision sounds interesting. Too bad we never saw it. Not like actually seeing Rey have that vision would make her fear of turning to the dark side seem more real and not a complete ass pull or anything. The gang heads to World War II planet to find someone to forcibly pull the Sith translation from 3PO's head. Again, why does every planet just let the First Order do whatever they want? How does the First Order have an inexhaustible supply of ships and people and weapons? Yet every other planet in the galaxy is utterly defenseless. In the original, the Empire could do whatever they wanted because they were the army and presumably were collecting space taxes from everyone. But the First Order is just like an invading force and everyone just accepts it like, yeah, what you gonna do? Then female Boba Fett shows up, also known as Zori Bliss, which sounds like someone's OC erotic Zelda Zora character. Turns out in a futile attempt to try and give Poe some depth as a character, they make him have a dark and mysterious smuggling past. Too bad being a smuggler in Star Wars is completely generic, and is one of the main playable classes in the game, and is completely uninteresting, unoriginal, pointless, and has no effect on Poe having a character arc or anything. Power Ranger Villain 374 is mad at Poe because they probably used to bang and then he ditched her. God, JJ, so sexist! And she's gonna turn Rey in for the money. But then Rey beats everyone up, and they all become friends instantly. Did I say Naruto? I'm sorry, this is Dragon Ball again. Not that you care, but I think you're okay. Don't worry, those people that Rey beats up will never be mentioned or seen again, even though they all die horribly. Finn is inexplicably mad that Poe used to be a smuggler. Why Finn would care about this, considering his backstory of being a brainwashed stormtrooper, is never explained, except to create hastily contrived drama, fake character depth, and awkward comedy. Finn even loudly screams out a joke while the heroes are trying to be stealthy in an occupied city. Oh damn right, Spice Runner. Runner of Spice. All right, get your spice. Good joke. Everybody laugh. 
Fortunately, we're introduced to the best character in all the Star Wars sequels. That's right, Baba Frick. Hey, Cousin Baba can get you the goods, but it'll make him wipe all of 3PO's memory. 3PO's kind of nervous about losing his entire identity, but everyone is like, Shut up and just do it, you pussy. And 3PO says he's gonna take one last look at his friends, even though everyone there hates him. <laughs> Power Rangers and Poe have a nice heart-to-heart -heart about how the First Order regularly steals children to make them soldiers. How long's it been like this? First Order took most of the kids a long time ago. Jeez, really trying to make our heroes look like heartless bastards, JJ. In the arms of the angel. Every day, innocent are abused, beaten, and neglected. And they're crying out for help. Zori just happens to somehow, with no explanation, and off screen, get a magic First Order coin that lets any ship bypass any blockade or land on any ship. We see just her eyes and no face. Why is this character even in the movie? I swear, Zori is literally in the movie just to give Poe a case of the not gaze. Meanwhile, Ray remembers Punchy ship and says it's the ship we keep seeing when Ray got ditched and her parents were on it. Aren't ships like mass produced in Star Wars? Shouldn't there be like a bunch of the same kind? Nope. It's the ship. C-3PO reads the dagger inscription and says the Sith Wayfinder is on a moon of Endor, and no one cares that his entire memory has been wiped and the sacrifice he has made. Taking one last look, sir, at my friends. Gullible! Loser! Then Kylo's destroyer shows up, and Rey immediately senses that Chewie's alive and okay on board. If she could sense that, shouldn't she have been able to sense that Chewie wasn't on the ship she blew up? There can be no question! Zora gives Poe her magic coin so they can easily save Chewie. Convenient. Then Kylo and Rey do the old swabaroo, with him flying to the planet and her flying to his ship. Silly movie! Poe and company land on the Star Destroyer in a giant empty hangar. They somehow take out two child soldiers with one blast, and there's only two more in the entire giant hangar bay. Remember in the original Star Wars when saving someone from an enemy ship was a big deal and required a complicated plan? Ain't nobody got time for that. Then Rey mind controls some troopers. Why didn't she do that before? Could have saved the life of some poor mind controlled child soldiers. In the Could have had a whole like fake, they're taking you prisoner bit. Whatever. Go Rey says, the cameras, and they shoot them. Though I'm not sure how that helps, because presumably they would check a room if the camera suddenly went down, and the last image they recorded was someone shooting them. Whatever. The Force, and by Force I mean the script, tells Rey that the dagger's on the ship and that they need it for some reason. The dagger's on the ship. We need it. Why? A feeling. Oh, shut up. Glad Rey is willing to risk the safety of her friends and split up in a very dangerous place just because of a vague feeling. A real hero! They save Chewie and finally some First Order people notice an unauthorized ship in their hangar, as well as the corpses of their fellow child soldiers. Fly away. For a group of people so good at materializing an endless supply of ships, these people sure suck at management. Wait, why is this guy daintily running around with a riding crop? Does the First Order have a space horse battalion? Oh my god, no. Don't answer that! I was just joking! Our heroes get attacked by child soldiers, but they gun them down with such ease, it feels like a quick time event cutscene. Oh, never mind. After effortlessly killing 40 child soldiers, Poe finally gets shot and surrounded in one of those unwinnable supposed to lose cutscenes. Meanwhile, Rey finds Kylo's room, and the dagger's just, like, sitting on his dresser, as well as all of Chewie's stuff. For some reason. A convenient coincidence. But Kylo skypes her. He decides they have to retcon the last movie, so he clumsily explains how her parents chose to be no one, even though they were important. So he says he technically didn't lie to her about them being no one. Except that's a lie! Your parents were no one. They chose to be. To keep you safe. They were filthy junk traders. Sold you off for drinking money. I never lied to you. But that too turned out to be a lie. Ah, <sighs> when you can't trust evil parent murdering Sith anymore, who can you trust? Then they fight. For some reason. Rey remembers her parents saying, You'll be safe here. Safe 
Where? As a slave scavenger on a desert waste planet? That's stupid. You're both stupid. Luke was on Tatooine because his aunt and uncle were there. Obi-Wan didn't just ditch him like, whatever. Then Kylo tries to tell Rey what happened to her parents, but she freaks out and won't listen, despite wanting to find out about her parents being a huge part of her motivation and character for the last two movies. So why are they even fighting? Shouldn't Rey be like, what do you know about my parents? Tell me! What's Rey's motivation here? Though I do like the effect of them fighting in two different places at once, it's too bad it's in service of something that makes absolutely no sense. That is, unless JJ's point is that women are overly emotional and irrational. Wow, JJ, that's sexist. I find the term sexist. Yeah, you tell him, girl! Kylo says that Palpy wanted Rey, but her parents wouldn't give her up, so Big Ocho killed them with that Sith dagger. And I guess Ocho was too stupid to check the planet he literally just picked up her parents from to, you know, see if Rey was there. She's literally within sight distance of your ship as it flies away. You think Food Square guy is risking his life protecting Rey from some dangerous bounty hunter? Actually, he probably would have called Uchi himself just to sell her off. Follow the girl and get that droid. I guess Palpy was too stupid to have her parents brought to Sith World where he could use Sith powers to extract the information from them. Nope. Just kill him and forget about ever finding Rey. Guess he really didn't care that much. Anyways, in their fight, the Vader helmet gets knocked over, and Kylo figures out where she is. Pretty cool. Except, just a few minutes earlier, Rey was able to sense that Chewie was on the ship. So shouldn't Kylo be able to know that Rey is on the ship too? Wait a second. Why didn't Kylo see Rey was holding the dagger? You are hard to find. You can't ignore me! Wouldn't that immediately alert him that she was in- Stop asking questions! Meanwhile, Wow, our hero's brain-dead idea to waltz into a Star Destroyer with absolutely no plan whatsoever actually backfired, and now they're going to pay for it. Just kidding! Turns out Hux, the bad guy Hitler youth for the last two movies, is the spy, and is double-crossing the First Order. I'm the spy. I knew it! No, you didn't. Um... Why? He says he's helping them just because he wants Kylo Ren to lose. Uh... Does he not realize that Kylo Ren losing means he will probably get blown up? Where was he in the last two movies when the First Order lost, and thousands, if not millions of brainwashed child soldiers got blown up? Whatever, I guess it's just a random convenient thing to happen. Rey confronts Kylo, and finally, stormtroopers show up. I guess they were all on a break or something. Did you hear something? Probably just another drill. Though suddenly now, Rey is asking Kylo why Palpy wanted to kill her, even though two seconds earlier when he tried to tell her the same information, she tried to cut him in half. Pfft, women. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> then Kylo tells Rey Palpy was worried she would be too powerful because she's his granddaughter. What? That means Palpy got intimate with a lady while looking like a horrible monster man. Gross. Thank you for putting that image in our heads, JJ. My eye! Then Kylo says that Palpy doesn't know that Kylo and Rey are a dyad. To which everyone in the audience goes, <gasps> What's a dyad? I looked it up after the movie, assuming they mentioned it in a past movie and I just forgot, but nope! This is the only movie this important and pivotal plot point is mentioned. And all Kylo says about it is... Two, that are one. Um, what does that mean? Are they like four soulmates? Why? Why are they four soulmates? Someone take two seconds to slow down and explain anything that's happening to me in this movie! Seriously, someone explain it to me. Ray backs away to the hangar bay edge and you can hear wind and it's blowing. But like, this is a spaceship, you know, designed to operate. Primarily, in space. Shouldn't the hangar bay have some sort of like, I don't know, sci-fi shielding that allows ships to enter without allowing the vacuum of space to suck everything out? Whatever, maybe they turned it off. She was in my quarters. Lock down the ship. 
Never trust that guy again. Kylo tells Rey he wants them to go kill Palpy together, which is her primary goal in this movie. However, she's like, Nope. And dips head on the Millennium Falcon instead of working with Kylo, the guy who already knows how to get to Palpatine and is a powerful Force user. But Sitch, it's not that simple. Kylo wanted her to join the dark side. Yeah, he did, but... So what? She could just kill Palpy and then be like, Yeah, here's the thing, Kylo. Uh, I'm just not into emo bad boys anymore, so... <laughs> Sucker. Rey knows that Kylo already knows how to get to Exticle. So Rey should know that even if she got a Sith Wayfinder and could get there on her own, Kylo would just be there waiting for her like... Hey. This entire back and forth is literally pointless. Hey, how come when they hit the engine it knocks all the troopers away, and Kylo has to use the force to push against it, but Rey is completely unaffected even though she's the closest? That's a good question. And the answer is... 